Hey guys, Brian from Brian Boas here. Lately I've been getting a lot of questions from you guys about terms related to the origin of Pat Boas. For example, captive bred versus wild caught versus farm bred. What exactly do these terms mean? And which ones should you consider adding to your collection? So that's what I'm going to discuss in today's episode. So be sure to stay tuned. So if you're new to the channel, if you want to learn all about keeping and breeding boas in captivity, be sure to hit the subscribe button. It really helps the channel growth on YouTube, and I greatly appreciate your support. First off, a bit of history. For the beginning of reptile keeping, all reptiles, of course, had to come from the wild. That's the ultimate origin of reptiles. They came from the wild. So the initial founder animals for any type of boa or any other reptile had to be collected from the wild. And for the majority of the first part of reptile keeping, almost all animals were collected from the wild. So the populations were quite plentiful. There really weren't many protections in place. People could just go out and collect as many as they want. There really weren't restrictions about bringing them across borders. And this is how it was up through even most of the 20th century, up to about the 70s or so. And so people became, you know, keeping all these reptiles um, obviously they wanted to try to breed them and so over time they developed procedures and techniques that were successful in breeding them and you know a science of herpeticulture was founded and you know which is of course a great thing because we obviously depend on herpeticulture for the reptile hobby today so it really started changing around I would say the 80s and 90s more and more captive breeding was going on and less and less collection of animals from the wild. Unfortunately a lot of the populations that were collected had become depleted and there really weren't many to collect anymore as well as a lot of the laws were changing. We had CITES, the Convention on International Trade and Endangered Species which stopped the uh, exportation of many types of animals. Um, we also have individual countries which clap down on their laws. You know, many reptile keepers are viewed kind of with a negative um, view as far as smuggling and things like that. So many countries just basically closed their borders to export. Today the situation is that very few of the countries in the, of the range of boa constrictor actually allow export of reptiles. So it's very unlikely that you'll even be able to buy a wild caught animal from many different types or groups of boas, um, such as this crawl key boa. So of course all of the animals that um, established the crawl key population in captivity came from that small island off the coast of Belize, but it's now completely closed to export. In fact, these animals are descended from animals collected in the 70s and 80s by a few people that went to these islands. Um, you know, we can trace the bloodlines. This one is a Rio Bravo bloodline, so we can trace back to the original founder animal if you have the pedigrees. But these animals are, have been in captivity for many generations. And it's really a good thing because the populations of many of these animals have declined. I've even seen estimates that the number of crawl key boas remaining in the wild on this island might be as few as eight animals. In fact, they might be wiped out altogether. So it's only our captive breeding that's keeping this type of boa alive in the world. So because there are so few wild caught boas available commercially, the vast, vast majority of animals that you buy are going to be captive bred. They're actually going to be captive born and bred. So you might see this abbreviated as CB, which is either captive born or captive bred, or CBB, captive born and bred. And so the reason for this distinction is you could potentially have a CB animal that's captive born, but not captive bred. So if somebody collected a gravid boa in the wild, and then it had its babies in captivity, those would be captive born. However, they wouldn't be captive bred. But this is the exception because very few captive born animals are from wild caught gravid females. The vast majority of boas in captivity are captive born and bred. And this is great. These are by far the best pet animals. They're more well adapted to captivity. They're more likely to be docile and handleable and do really well as a pet. And when you go to a reptile show or a reptile store, virtually 100% of morph boas are going to be captive born and bred. 
about the only possible way you could get a captive or a, a morph boa that was wild caught is if it was a rare founder animal like say a an albino boa popped up in the wild then that could be a wild caught animal however that would be highly highly expensive as a new morph is usually selling for tens sometimes even hundreds of thousands of dollars so you're not likely to see this so for all intents and purposes a hundred percent of the morph boas in captivity are at this point captive born and bred next i want to touch on wild caught animals and you might see this abbreviated as wc for wild caught and although there are very few wild caught boas available there are a handful and most commonly you'll see red tail boas Guiana or Suriname red tails that are wild caught. So these are collected in their native environment, they're exported, and then they enter captivity. And so they often are less expensive than the captive bred and born animals, typically about half the price. Some beginners might be tempted to buy one of these just to save a few hundred bucks that they can put towards maybe feeding or an enclosure. I would say, do not do this, okay? Do not buy a wild caught red tail boa unless you're absolutely sure what you're getting into. Okay, for a new pet keeper to buy a wild caught boa would be a huge mistake and you're highly likely for it to die probably within the first year. So, you know, that couple hundred bucks that you save, it wouldn't even cover the vet bills that you're gonna be paying for. And even with a veterinary intervention, your animal's likely to die. So please, if you're a pet keeper, do not buy a wild caught red tail boa. I would say the only people that it makes sense to buy a wild caught red tail are experienced breeders that want to add some new bloodlines to the collection. You know, the best way to diversify the genetics are to get wild caught unrelated animals to bring in the new genes to avoid inbreeding depression. Okay, but even with this in mind, most breeders who are gonna do this, they know that it's difficult and they're prepared with a veterinarian and with you know, anti-parasite treatments and um, they know what they're getting into. Even then, they'll typically uh, buy like twice as many boas as they're gonna wanna add because they know half of them are gonna die in the first year. It's just really risky. So wild cup boas are hard to acclimate. They tend to be much more aggressive than the captive bred ones. And they're just really a terrible choice for a pet keeper. So don't buy a wild caught true red tail unless you really know what you're getting into. Or for that matter, any wild caught boa, if you could find another type of wild caught boa. So I just wanted to mention that of all the animals in my collection, all but three of them are captive born and bred. And 100% of the boas I sell are also captive born and bred. If you buy a boa from me, it's going to be born in captivity from a breeding that occurred in captivity from captive bred and born parents. Um, so you know that these animals have been in captivity for a while, they're really established. It's really your best bet as far as getting a healthy pet boa to buy a captive born and bred animal from an established breeder. It should also be noted that very few of any captive breeders of boa constrictors are selling wild caught animals. If you're gonna get a wild caught boa, they seem to come from reptile distributors, these uh, wholesalers that import and export animals. They typically will have large numbers of them collected from the wild, and there's really not that much put into getting them established and ready to go. They might give them a dose or two of an anti-parasite treatment, but in general, it's up to the pet keeper, the boa buyer or breeder to do this care. So if you, for whatever reason, are gonna buy one, be sure that you're prepared with a veterinarian and you know what you're getting into with your wild caught boa. So that's captive bred and wild caught. There's also a third category that's not quite wild caught, but it's definitely closer to wild caught than it is captive bred. And that's called the farm bred animal. And so I actually have three farm bred boas in my collection. They're the only farm bred ones I have. They're Iquitos Peruvian boas that I got about five years ago. This is actually the female. So beautiful, beautiful animal. Just really personifies or serpentifies, I should say, the look of the Iquitos Peruvian with the inky black saddles and the beautiful golden colors. So I actually bought a trio about five years ago that was supposed to be two females and a male. It actually worked out to be two males and a female. But regardless, they're great boas. I really enjoyed these guys. 
and they are farm bred. And so what exactly is farm bred? Well, this can be a couple things. It can be a gravid female boa that's collected from the wild, brought into a captive situation in the country of origin, so it would be in Peru, and then after she has the babies, they're sold as farm bred animals. So basically, the, the wild caught female gives birth to babies in the native habitat. So often they'll keep these animals in pens outside in a semi-captive situation. They're exposed to the natural environment in their natural habitat. And then often they'll keep them for a period of years. They have males and females in the same pens in their natural habitat. They're allowed to reproduce as they would normally. And the babies are collected and sold as farm bred babies. And that's what farm bred means. So it's not really captive bred, but it's a little bit removed from the wild, although really not that much. So a lot of the same concerns with captive or with uh, wild caught babies apply to farm bred babies. So there's a good chance your farm bred animal may be carrying parasites. It may be carrying different diseases that it contracted from the wild. And also behaviorally, it's gonna be more like a wild caught animal. So this female, I wouldn't call her tame. You know, she tolerates handling, but she's definitely a little bit edgy. Um, my, these farm bred Iquitos have struck, out, struck at me a few times. I don't think they've ever landed a bite, but they're definitely not one of my more tame boas. They just have this wild edge. And you know, some people actually like the wild edge in a boa. They don't want a boa that's like a pussycat tame. So these uh, farm bred animals, they're generally more wild. They may have the diseases. And then there's also a certain percentage of them that just don't do well in captivity. And about six years ago, around 2017, there were a lot of these farm bred Iquitos animals coming in. That's when I got mine. And a lot of them were available, very reasonably priced. But a lot of them didn't do well. So from what I've heard, there were a couple shipments of these animals. One of the shipments, almost all of them died pretty quickly. So anybody that got one, they just, for whatever reason, weren't very healthy or adaptable to captivity and they all died. These guys, my three, have done really well. You know, maybe I just got lucky, but they've adapted pretty well to captivity. They've gotten pretty big. Hopefully I'm gonna be breeding them. I actually paired up this female with one of my Aikido's males this year, but I didn't get any babies, unfortunately. But I'm gonna try again in 2023, so we'll have to see. Hopefully I'll have some of these baby Aikido's in the summer of next year. And they represent a new bloodline because they're unrelated to captive and the others in captivity. These three farm bred Kedos Peruvians are my only non-captive born and bred boas. Since they haven't had any babies yet, as I mentioned, all of the babies that produce are captive born and bred from captive born and bred parents. So you know that these animals are established to captivity. So I probably, mo most people, I would not recommend buying a farm bred for the same reason I wouldn't recommend buying a captive bred animal. But if you're a breeder that's experienced with establishing boas in captivity, looking for new bloodlines, you might want to consider this. Although they really aren't that available all that common. And it's mostly Peruvian and Suriname and Guiana, two red tails that you can get in the farm bred form. And this girl is, she's getting a little bit tired of being handled. Again, she's you know, not all that handleable because she's got that wild behavior. So I'm going to put her back, but I hope you enjoyed this video and cleared up some of your uh, misconceptions about wild caught versus captive bred. Shoot me a, um, any questions or comments you might have. If you have any experiences with farm bred or wild caught, I'd love to hear them in the comments below. Thanks for watching and enjoy your boas.